as Nicole already said. Uh, this is Project Eureka. We are Team Plutonite. Uh, I'm AJ Biswas. I'm the lead programmer and music composer for our project, and Liam is our lead artist. We are going Hello. to be speaking about what this whole thing has been all about. First of all, as Nicole already said, Project Eureka is a collaboration between Open3D Foundation and RIT, where us, a team of students, are so were selected and given a grant to create a game and publish it as one of O3D's first commercial products. It's very exciting. We've been working on this project since May of 23, May of last year, so it's been a while now. And this is our team. We've got me and Tyler as the programmers, as the primary programmers, and we have Jack Kalina as our producer. We have Liam here as our primary artist, and then we have Aiden Roberts and Kenny Rossi as our two designers. So Liam and I are here to represent them as we talk about this. And so what are we doing at Project Eureka? So we're building a game, and the name of the game is State of Matter. Here is our synopsis. Earth is in the midst of an energy crisis, and you, Celine Carter, are sent to retrieve a newly discovered substance deep in the Kuiper Belt called Plutonite. The mining station there went radio silent years ago, so you have to investigate the facility, discover the truth behind its abandonment, and secure that Plutonite repository for Earth. Getting more into the specifics of this game, State of Matter is a sci-fi first-person puzzle shooter combo set in the year 2147 in the future. Uh, you utilize an experimental multi-tool, as you see on the right there. Uh, we call it the Phasm 4 SLG that fires plutonite in different states of matter to solve puzzles and defend yourself against rogue robots. Here at the bottom, we've got some concept art that, we, that was created by... Our concept art was by... made by our artist, Mert. Our yeah. 2D artist, Mert. Uh, he was a member of our team from way back when this was still a prototype that we were building in Unity for a class last last spring. And he's made some really good art for us since then. And of course, on the right side here, there's concept art for our main character, Celine Carter. And here is not necessarily our official trailer, but it's a quick 40 second teaser of what is to come. I'll go ahead and play it. So that was our quick little teaser, and we have a Discord server in case anyone's interested in joining it. Let me go ahead and... That's just full screened. You gotta wait. I believe you can click passes. twice. There we go. Okay. There we go. I'll oh. go ahead and let, uh, give Liam these slides. All right. As we're showing off here, we decided to only include three states of matter. Uh, not the fourth, gas, liquid, and solid. The gas is used to melt uh, shards of plutonite in order to solve, access other parts of the terrain and move around the facility. The liquid is used to extrude off of existing crystals and create bridges to, again, get to solve puzzles and get to other parts of the facility. And solid is used to, for more freedom, to create your own nodes to extrude off of. Here we have a showcase of a few of the areas that we have modeled and materialed so far. We have the exterior, the interior of the first level, the descent down into, and the hub. Off of the hub comes another two levels, if you would go to the next slide, that we have the art for, but still need to finish the art pass in order to add it to the demo. We are still in the development of a third level and plan to have that be the final level before we create a finish. However, we might need to, based on our current release date, push back. Sorry, that was a little bit of a, took this slide from a previous thing. That is a little bit of an outdated thing. So don't worry about that last bullet point for now. Things are a little bit up in the air. <laughs> anyway, 
Regarding specifically how we've been developing this game in the context of O3DE, there's some pros and some cons. First of all, pros are definitely, regarding the technical sides of it, we've definitely enjoyed using the eBus system, the event bus system. It's Since O3DE has this really nice event-driven system behind it, it's been very reliable because when you think about, we came from Unity, right? And in Unity, you explicitly need to get references to various components in a game object in order to be able to interact with them. But with an Eva, with the Eva system, you don't need that. You can send a request to a particular component on a, a game object or an entity in this case, and it doesn't need to actually be there for your request to go through properly. If it's not actually there, if there's no component there to actually catch your request, then it'll just go into the void rather than, like in Unity, crash the whole thing, right? Secondly, the lighting system, the Atom Renderer, it's been serving us pretty well. We've been slowly learning how the lighting system in the engine works and using it to our advantage. The uh, things like the Diffuse Pro Grid components, they've been really serving us really well with baking indirect lighting into our scenes, and as a result, things look really nice. Thirdly, the modularity of the engine, which is kind of like its main thing. Being able to extend the engine for our own particular purposes has been easier in this engine than any other engine we've ever interacted with, and it's been amazing as a result. We've been able to implement our own particular changes to the engine, as well as if we wanted to, we could create our own gems, which there will be more on that in the near future because we are actually planning on creating a standalone gem to help us. Uh, and of course, there's personal growth of skills and knowledge throughout this project, like since this engine is fully open source, we've had full freedom of kind of diving deep into the engine code, understanding how it works. And as a result, a lot of us have gained a whole lot of knowledge and experience with how engines are programmed in the back end and how to just by better programming skills overall, since this engine is a C++ based one. And Liam, if you want to add anything to personal growth. Uh, yeah, it's definitely been nice. I started this project in Unity as a prop artist, and now I have experience in environment art, character design, and a little bit of level design. So it's definitely expanded horizons. And for cons, all engine comes with their issues. Regarding issues and bugs, as the engine is currently still deep in development, of course, there those always those things that kind of push us back. If anything, it's taught me that I should probably save my scene every 30 seconds because we experience crashes quite often and of course since this is a new engine there's not much documentation out there especially for some of the peripheral features that aren't used very often for example the track view editor which hasn't been used that much and so if you're looking for documentation on it, there is documentation on it but regarding like physically how to use it uh, we had to do a bit of experimenting ourselves to figure out exactly how it's meant to be how things like the animation sequences you create are actually supposed to be invoked and of course, again, engines have been development, so there are mission, missing features, especially at the start of this project. There was a lack of an audio implementation, and the, there was a lack of a really a reliable way to export your project into a standalone executable. But fortunately, this engine's come a pretty long way since then. The mini audio gem is now there for audio integration. We haven't actually used it. We haven't had a need for it. We've been using WISE in place of it since then. So I can't really put add my input as to how good it is or bad. And of course, the, uh, there's been developments for exporting your project and making that easier. Now there's full scripts for it and whatnot that are by default added to new projects that you create, and it's really nice. Of course, there's still the there's always like the missing feature of a particle system. Like if you're trying to add particles into your game, you'll need to look for uh, third-party integrations like uh, the popcorn effects gem if you're interested in that kind of thing. But again, things for the future. For us. What comes next? I'll go ahead and let Liam start off with this. So we're in the final stages now. We're finishing off the last of the art. We're running playtests pretty much every day. Currently, the plan is also to create a Steamworks gem to help other people when they develop a game in O3DE to publish to Steam, make it easier, a more streamlined process. And we are also in the process of making our own Steam page. Indeed. The Steamworks gem, it's... Not quite in development yet, but it's very much in the plans. For one, we ourselves need it in order to be able to publish onto Steam, but it's a gem that would incorporate the Steamworks API, and the idea is because it's standalone, we'll be making it a completely public open source repository for anybody to use for their own purposes if they also want to publish their games in the future on Steam. And that's, what, that's all we got for now, so thank you. Really exciting. AJ and Liam, thank you so much. 
everyone else, do we have any questions for the two of them? Have a release schedule or like a plan to follow after you're done your kind of first production line pass? Yeah, we have a post-release, a plan for post-release. It's not set in stone yet, since we're still in the middle of finishing up some last stuff before we do a proper release. We're still in the pre-release phase, of course. But post-release, we're definitely going to be continuing supporting the game because we're expecting a lot of feedback regarding issues found, and we'll be like adding patches and whatnot. That's mainly it. In terms of adding real content, the plan is that all the game's core content is in. We're not adding any extra stuff after that. Everything else should be blemishes, polishes, post-release. Yep. Sounds great.